Come here for a second. I want to show you something. See that red dot? You know what that means? It means I need to show some attention to this container. This is Giant Canyons. And let me show you these animals. As you can see, there's a lot right on the surface, on top of the cork bark. And these are a burrowing animal. I know there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in this container. First, first of all, it's very overcrowded. And second of all, it's pretty deep, but I'd like to have it a little bit deeper. It's about an inch and a half. I'd like to make it about two to three inches deep. You can see they're just all over the place. So that's the task for today. We're going to take this container of uh, giant canyons and we're going to put them in a new container. So stay tuned and I'll show you how we do that. The Isopod Vlog. For this job, I've moved everything outside. It's just so much easier that way. I'm going to make a lot of cuttings here, and to clean everything up, it's just easier to do this outside. I have my drill. I have a bunch of buckets that we're cutting today. This drill is, um, I believe, a one and a half inch hole. The bit is commonly used for drilling uh, uh, door holes. I'm real fortunate that this drill is going through this plastic super easy. You do have to be careful when you're drilling holes. You want to start the hole very slowly. And as you're coming close to the end of uh, the hole, you want to slow the drill down quite a bit. The more you can stabilize that bit in the plastic, the better off you're going to be. Keep it as straight as you possibly can. It's getting very close here, and you can see that it, it lets go. And we're through. It's an easy matter of then pulling the drill bit right out of the tub. I'm positioning the tub here, and you can see that I finally realized that it's best if I just put the tub right on the ground. The ground stabilizes the, the tub and allows it not to move. While I'm drilling the other three holes in the tub, let me just mention that these tubs, the 10 below are behind me, are 27 quarts, and they're a higher tub. I'm going to use these for burrowing isopods and millipedes. On the left side, you can see that I have 16, 16 cup or almost four liter containers, almost a gallon container. I'm going to use those for springtails, for dwarf whites, and for dwarf grays. I have a handful of other containers there, four or five other containers that we'll be drilling out today as well. It's such a great day. I really am glad that I chose to do this outside rather than doing it in the garage or doing it downstairs. I think my wife's happy that I didn't do it downstairs and make a, such a mess as well. We're finishing up the fourth hole here, and you can see it really doesn't take that much time at all to go through four holes with this container. At this point in the video, I'll go ahead and skip forward so we don't have to watch drilling nine additional containers. Let's jump over to those four liter or one gallon containers. I've changed the drill bit. I'm using a one half hole bit, and this is going to work great. I'm going to put three to four holes in opposite sides of this container, only two sides. This goes really, really quick. And you really have to be careful because these containers are a little bit, because the plastic on these containers are thinner. I'll say again, I'm keeping dwarf whites and springtails in these types of containers, so I don't need a lot of ventilation. In fact, I've decided to not drill completely through these tubs, and what I'm doing is just drilling enough to create about a, an eighth to one quarter inch hole in each of these uh, holes that I'm creating. This is going pretty quick, but I am taking my time just to make sure that I have a proper feel. How much pressure to give on each hole so that I don't crack the plastic. As I work my way to the end here and get this sixth hole, I'll go ahead and show you the holes on each side. So there's three on one side, and on the opposite side, there's an additional three. So here we have our final product. We have all the holes cut in the plastic. There's uh, several different steps, additional steps to do, and I'm going to bring the, the tubs in the house, and we're going to finish up there. I've moved all the tubs and all the material back into the house, 
sitting down in the family room. This next step is taking the burrs off of the holes that have just been drilled out. And this is important so that you can hot glue the material, whatever material you're using, to the holes. This is a very, very tedious job, but it's one that really needs to be done. I would certainly suggest using a brand new razor blade for this task. You can see I'm using one of the extra tubs to catch the extra plastic coming off of these uh, tubs when I cut for the holes. Better to do that than leave the mess on the floor. Again, this is an easy task. It's just very, very tedious. So again, I'm going to skip ahead and we'll take a look at the next task. And I think you already know what this task is. In preparation to this task, I've done a couple of things. I've cut a couple of long pieces of chiffon so that then I can cut individual pieces to cover each individual hole. I've also plugged in the glue gun to warm it up. So I'm taking the strip of chiffon, I'm placing it over the hole, and then I'm cutting a piece out to fit over the hole. So I'm leaving a, about a half of an inch on either side of the hole to enable me to hot glue that chiffon right over the hole. So I'll mention you can use chiffon, you can use cheesecloth, you can use any kind of a screening that will cover that hole. The purpose of this screening is to keep small bugs out of the, the container and also obviously to keep the isopods in. Of all the steps to prepare these containers for new isopods or millipedes, this is probably my least favorite step. It just seems so tedious to, to uh, measure these out and to cut them and prepare them to glue. I finished cutting the four holes for the sides of the container. And now I'll go ahead and grab the top of the container and cut that hole. Another option that's popular today is to use pre-made metal grid vents for these holes. I prefer the chiffon. It is tedious to make, but the metal vents run around $1.50 to $3 each to uh, purchase. As I finish up this top, I'll go ahead and skip forward to the hot glue step. And all five pieces of chiffon are cut for each of the holes in this tub. The hot glue gun is already warm. I'm going to go ahead and grab a hot glue stick. Let me caution that this step is the one that you should use the most caution with. This hot glue is extremely, extremely hot and can cause some severe burning on your hands. As you can see, the chiffon overlaps the hole by about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch on, in all directions of the hole. All I'm doing with the hot glue at this point is smearing it on just a little bit of the chiffon and overlapping it onto the plastic of the lid. Take your time with this process because you really, really don't want to redo this in the future. And speed up the video at this time so that we can see the gluing of the chiffon onto the hole for the tub, but not take all the time that it took to actually do the gluing. And finally, the gluing is done. So again, this should prevent in insects coming in and isopods or millipedes from getting out. Now we finally see the tub completely finished. The four holes on the side are covered with the chiffon, and the top has the, the hole covered with chiffon as well. Now we're ready to add the substrate. And what I've done is I've selected substrate from an old culture. I've taken away taken out all of the isopods. So this is just a pre-mixed substrate. You can see that it's made up of worm castings, sphagnum moss, some orchid bark, and some charcoal. This will put us at a depth of about a half inch or three quarters of an inch. The reason I use this old culture is because it's bioactive. It's already set to shorten the break in time of this new setup have another culture that I've used and taken away all the isopods out of. And we're going to use that substrate as well. It's more of a peat base. And I'm going to use about half of this culture. And again, this is bioactive. I'm only using half because I need another maybe quarter of an inch or so of the substrate. 
And because we added that peat, I'd like to strengthen the substrate a little bit by adding some worm castings to the substrate. I'll throw in two or three cups here, and this will firm up that substrate to allow the isopods to dig a little bit. Again, these giant canyons are a burrowing uh, isopod. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. So again, this is probably two, maybe two and a quarter inches deep. It has the worm castings, it has the peat, it has the original older substrate in it. And I'm going to break down the worm castings a little bit, and then I'll mix this all together. Now we have our new substrate all set. Our next step is to pull the cork bark, any of the decorations, and we're going to knock the isopods off of these decorations. And you'll see why in just a moment. Here's the larger piece of cork bark. And again, you can see so many of these giant canyons on this piece of driftwood. Let's just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Such a really, really interesting isopod. These are the little tanks. Let's go ahead and knock these into the new culture. Not sure why I put it in the old culture first. But let's go ahead and knock them into the new, onto the new substrate. And finally, what we're going to do is take the old culture. I'm going to take a spoon so I can be as gentle as possible. And I'm going to take the culture out of the old culture and put it into the new. The first thing I'm going to do is take the sphagnum moss, place that on the culture. I'll move that around a little bit so I can put additional uh, substrate from the old culture into the new culture. You can see the isopods just running around like crazy in the new culture. So whatever we've pulled out of the old culture, let's say about 100 or so, I bet you there's four times as many buried in the old culture. And again, with the spoon, I'm going to be as careful as I can be. Isopods are pretty tough. They can handle some movement around. I'm grabbing some of the pieces of bark. I'd like to distribute pieces of bark in the substrate when I can. Each one of these tablespoons is probably pulling 5 to 10 to 15 isopods. It's crazy how these giant canyons bury themselves in the substrate. What I've done is taken spoonfuls of the old culture, the old substrate, and laid it on top of the new substrate. And I've done that just to about half of the old substrate because I don't want to bury the isopods in the new substrate. I'll come back in a couple of hours and I'll add a little bit more substrate and a little bit more until the old substrate is all in the new container. This gives the isopods a chance to burrow to the surface if they need to in the new substrate. You can go ahead and try picking them out one by one, but I'll tell you what, that's a day and a half of work. It's a real struggle to do that. Thank you for watching, Isopod fans, and if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the not notification bell, and we'll see you next week. Thanks again.